everybody and welcome to today's faith moments so i want to think just for a few moments today about the big picture the hope that we have of the big picture of what god is doing and what he's going to do i said to you right back in the early days of lockdown something i did with the children was that i put a bookmark and just put my name on it sue and that popped it inside my bible and that was to remind me that whatever chapter we're in whatever page we're in Whatever page my life is in and our life together, we know the start of the book and we know the end of the story. It's less worrying that way. We know what God's big picture is. We know the start, we know the stop. We know that heaven will one day be ours. And we see what God wants to do today. So today I've called what I want to say, hope beyond our dreams. Hope beyond our dreams. Whatever we see today, there's a hope beyond our dreams. Whatever we see on our news, whatever we see happening in our world, let's not be afraid. We know the end of the story. And we can see part of what God's doing already today. The passage I want to take us to again is one of my favourites. I've been dreaming and, and holding God's hand for the river all through my adult life the river of God's spirit flowing to make all things new. Ezekiel had a dream, a vision. And in the dream, the vision, God brought him back to the entrance of the temple. The temple, the church where God's presence dwelt. There water was flowing from below the threshold of the temple towards the east. And if you read the passage through Ezekiel 47, it describes the water flowing, and as it flows, it gets deeper and deeper. And the angelic being that's with Ezekiel is saying, measure the depth. And again, the man measures it, 1,000, and it was a river I could not cross. The water had risen, it was deep enough to swim in, a river that could not be crossed. And the angelic being said to Ezekiel, mortal, have you seen this? So there's an incredible image of the temple, the place, God's dwelling place with man, with woman, with people. And then the river of God's Holy Spirit flowing from the temple, I believe from the church, the real church, flowing out. And as it flows, it doesn't get shallower, it gets deeper until it's so deep, it's deep enough to swim in, a river that cannot be crossed. And what is that river of God's Spirit doing? Wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will live. And there will be very many fish. Once these waters reach there, it will become fresh. And everything will live where the river goes. The image that's given is of the temple, the dwelling place of God, the church today in God's people, the Holy Spirit flowing and as it flows, it gets bigger and bigger and deeper and deeper. And wherever that river goes, wherever the movement of God's spirit flows, every living creature that swarms will live. And there will be very many fish once those waters reach there. And I love that, once those waters reach there. When I see dryness in myself, in the church, in the community, in the world, I don't want to be afraid. I just want to say, come Holy Spirit. Because when you come, when the river of your presence comes, everything will live. Let's not work at the dryness or be afraid of it or fight it. Let's pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Wherever the river flows, every living creature that swarms will live. And there will be very many fish, too many to count, once those waters reach there. It will become fresh and everything will live where the river goes. So since a young woman, I've dreamt of this river, of the river of God's Holy Spirit, his presence flowing and moving and changing everything. And I think as I've got older, I believe it more, I hold to it more, but I also fight the dryness less because there's no point fighting dryness. You just pray for the water to come. Pray for the spirit to move. Pray for his presence to be here. And I've probably told you before, but I'll tell you again. Many years ago at my, at my last church, things were very dry at the time. And I was just crying out to God, saying, Father, we can't carry on like this. 
and I was at my day off, so I was just going off and I went off to buy a present for my nephew from Toys R Us of all the places to go in Bolton. And then I was driving down the ramp. I was still praying and I was saying, Lord, you've got to do something. Come on, God. And as I drove down the ramp towards Toys R Us, I had a vision. It's amazing. I didn't crash the car, really. But in the vision, I saw a seal that was lying on the beach, beached, a beached seal, heavy, blubbery, can't move very far. And God just said to me, that's your church. But don't worry, when the ocean comes, she'll swim beautifully. And that has stayed with me forever. If you see your seal swimming in the ocean, so beautiful, so elegant, so free. On the beach, blubbery and heavy, but in the water, free. As the water of God's spirit reaches me, the dryness goes and it becomes fresh. Everything lives. As the water of God's spirit reaches you, the dryness goes. Everything becomes fresh. As it reaches your community, your family, your situation, your challenge that you're facing, as it flows more in our church and through our church to this world, everything will live wherever the river goes. My heart, let's not fight the dryness. Let's turn to God and pray for a movement of his spirit a fresh movement of his spirit that goes deeper and stronger in us first and then in and through us to the others. Let's pray. Father, the picture, the image, the vision you gave Ezekiel is the same today. May we see, we cry to you for a movement of your Holy Spirit. And wherever your spirit flows, everything, including us, will live. Amen. God bless you, God keep you as we journey together.